Hickok 45 here with a big Dan Wesson with a crazy long barrel or something on it, some sort of weird extension. <laughs> I couldn't get it in my holster. I couldn't figure out why. Let's see. Let's shoot it. See how it shoots. Let's see if it'll smoke pot. Well, yeah. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's a uh, velocity accelerator. <laughs> no, it's the Banish 45. Yeah, right. So this is a suppressor, and <clears throat> this firearm is set up for a suppressor, if you haven't noticed. That's why we're, uh, we may get another uh, Dan Wesson Vigil at some point, and maybe the Commander a different size and just shoot it uh, plain without the big giant sights on it. I don't know, because I like the firearm. And, uh, and I saw they had one of these, and it was set up for suppressor, threaded barrel, 45. Hey, let's, let's get one of those. We've got a cool suppressor for it and, uh, and shoot it and bring it all along. How's that for a plan? 45 is so cool because it's already basically, you know, subsonic. So you don't need special ammo. You just shoot it. I started putting my ears on, didn't I? So we've got the uh, Dan Wesson Vigil. <laughs> And again, the uh, Banish 45 uh, suppressor, suppressing a lot of the sound, right? <laughs> From uh, Silencer Central. Oh, cool. Let's put, I gotta put one on the gong. Oh, oh look, he's getting away. Oh, shy high, it's all right. Let's go to the gong. <laughs> That's too cool, it really is. Now, y'all get mad at me sometimes because I, I get such a thrill out of shooting steel with a suppressor. Guess what I'm going to do? You see that uh, brown leaf just uh, beyond the buffalo, between the buffalo and the uh, gong, okay? There's a brown leaf over there. I'm going to see if I can hit it. <laughs> I bounced into the uh, gong. I'll, I'll shoot at that brown leaf, uh, let's see, down below the pig over there. There, got it. Got it again. Got him. I'm gonna shoot at a brown leaf down here lower on the hill. Got it every time. I didn't miss, I, I promise. I hit the brown one. And uh, that way you could hear the suppressor, okay? It doesn't come through, you know, the camera, your computer, your ears and all that sort of thing. Uh, exactly. It does for John and me, because we're here. But, uh, you know, because your camera, the camera, your, t your computer, it suppresses everything to a certain level. So it's hard to, to really compare, you know, apples to apples. But, uh, again, those suppressors do not totally remove the sound. Now, they almost do with the big old slow-moving 45. Uh, but, uh, you know, they suppress it. They reduce it. Okay? And that's the main thing. People shoot them a fair amount on, like, 5.56 five, AR-15s. Let's see you reduce that one down to nothing, you know? But it, it does reduce the signature. And when they're used in, I guess, combat, that's the main goal is to maybe people get a sense of where you are from uh, <clears throat> a quarter mile away. But uh, unlike without the suppressor, they get a pretty good idea where you might be from five miles away. You know, they're so loud. So anyway, some of you folks in the military uh, some of you operators can give us more information on that, right? Okay. I got ammo here. We're going to shoot some of it. You mind? <laughs> so again, this, I, and I haven't talked much about the gun. This vigil is pretty cool. It's uh, Dan Wesson has a reputation for making a quality firearm. I've got a mag in, of course. Uh, at, a, uh, at a fairly reasonable price for what you get. There are no MIM parts in a Dan Wesson. As I understand, none zero okay and hand fitted real steel so it's as close as you can get i think to like an ed brown or wilson combat you know some of those uh high those custom gun makers so it's kind of the low end of the custom gun makers hand fitting and everything or it's the top end of the production guns i guess you say i don't know so it's just up there between say cold kimber and all those companies that you know produce a lot of firearms a lot of fair number of MIM parts and all that so it's up above them is where most people place Dan Weston I think but still I guess maybe below uh, you know your four or five Nighthawk your big custom you know gun makers maybe however a lot of people think this is really the best value for the money you know if you're going to pay $1,500 or up to 2000 you know for a, 
a custom or for a you know 1911. All right, they they just have a great reputation. It's hard to find anybody that doesn't like them. Uh, they really do, and I, I've always been impressed. Now watch it quit working. <laughs> totally honest. Uh, let's shoot the tree. <laughs> and that's the advantage of, of this, having these tall sights. I can actually use the sights and it seems to hit where I'm aiming, okay? Whereas if you just stick a suppressor on your firearm, you, you obscure your, your sight, line of sight, your sight picture, usually. Not a big issue, uh, a lot of people, like, I want to get a uh, barrel for one of my 45s, I'm not sure which one, maybe the Nighthawk or something, so I can put this suppressor on it. And I'm not going to worry that my sights aren't up above it, because I'm going to use it just for shooting big targets up close. I just wrap, uh, live around, didn't I? Like that. I can still hit that target, I can still hit the capital you know, without having the sights, I'm pretty sure. What if I could hit that... Uh, cinder block over there. See if I can come close to him on that barrel. <laughs> I think I hit the barrel. I think I hit the cinder block. <laughs> That's neat. <laughs> you hear it. <laughs> you know, with regular gunfire, you normally you can't, sometimes you can hear when you hit the barrel, but that was pretty cool. Uh, so the gun, itself yeah i think these are coca bola grips nice grips uh somebody i saw read i read they they are made by hogue i don't know if that's true or not but they're nice grips you've got a checkering on the front and rear of this uh grip that is cool and it's po not polymer it's uh, alloy okay and it's an aluminum grip and uh it's kind of a lightweight you know firing because of that and it's forged aluminum okay but it's hand fitted and everything else is steel you've got a stainless steel slide that's a nitride finish you know and uh you don't have a lot of ambi stuff which is fine for me uh we're just well made you got the undercutting here and a little bit of beveling on the magwell all right gosh what else of course again you got these tall sides now now understand again if you're new to firearms this is because we have a suppressor it's suppressor ready it has a threaded barrel. It came with it. It's the model that has that. Okay, so it's kind of the tactical model, even though they don't really call it that, I don't think. I guess you could say it has tactical sights on it. And, uh, you know, higher, they're taller. It's a, an Ameriglow front sight. Okay, it's a night sight. And it's, I think it's the same sights on their standard firearms, except they're shorter and not as tall. You got that same Ameriglow uh, tritium sight, I think, on the front. And then same type of sight on the rear, it's just they're not as, as big. Okay, this is a vigil. These just came out a couple of years ago and uh, they're pretty nice. I'll tell you one criticism I have of it. Let me take a shot. And that is, I, I mean, I'm, I tell you what, I, I don't need another 1911 need, there's that word, but I was tempted and uh, am still on getting this gun for myself in the commander uh, size. It comes in a commander and a, uh, I think they call it the CCO, which is the officer's model grip size with commander length uh, slide, four and a quarter. Uh, and I am really tempted on, on buying this. I like this gun. Uh, just as an aside, I really like it. But you know what? The only problem I have with it, and I was ready to order one, but uh, when I put my thumb up on the safety, like that, some, some 1911s are just that way with me, then... When my thumb's up there, uh, the, I, I don't activate the grip safety. I can't pull the trigger now, okay? And I like to shoot that way sometimes. And, you know, and it, for the defensive firearm, you, you know, it's not a bad position. So, so it's because of my large hand, though. It, you might not have that. It doesn't have that extra bump on the grip safety, okay? So that's my only negative, really, period, that I can think of. Maybe I can make up some, though, okay? Make up some reasons to bash it. <laughs> Pretty neat firearm. Uh, Dan Wesson does a good job. I keep wanting to put my ears on, but I'm not. Let's shoot that red two liter right there on top of that post. I've seen one there before. Yeah, boom, smack. Let's hit that orange one down here and listen to it smack. <laughs> I didn't get a good solid hit on it. Oh, I did on that one. <laughs> uh, do you mind if I go back over there on that uh, cinder block? That was fun. <laughs> I 
love the sound. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> oh, just hearing where you hit is so cool. All right, as I said before, it's it's more enjoyable and humorous if you hear shooting. I don't think it's, uh, you get the full effect if you're on the other side of the computer screen, but uh, it's just really neat. The sound is so different. Let's, let's shoot that buffalo up there. Just hear him get hit. Bong. How about that ram while we're at it? <laughs> it's like throwing rocks. And the gong needs another hit. Went low. <laughs> How about you, cowboy? I'm going to kill you silently. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna take the suppressor off because I want you to see this firearm and uh, you know without that extension. Okay, so pretty cool. Is it hot? Hot? Not too bad. Oh, it feels good out here. It's kind of chilly. You know, this is the uh, and this is the way you want to take them off with the slide back, ideally, nice and safe. The old Banish 45. We've got a lot of good use out of that. Nice, uh, nice suppressor. Okay. The same one we've used on other smaller nine millimeter. You, know, you just change out the piston the adapter. Ooh, it's a little bit warm. Put the thread protector on there, back on. All right. Now it still has that barrel sticking out. You got those big sights and everything, but uh, but but these are nice pistols. They really are, and and they're good looking. You know. I, I don't really have a lot of negatives. I, I'm sorry. I, I can make up some things, you know, just to maybe get attention and sound dramatic. But other than the uh, the grip safety, uh, you know, you know, it, it seems that most of these, maybe it's just the more expensive ones or whatever, but most of the grip safeties, now you get that extra bump on there to take care of that issue. And maybe this one, they thought it's, it extends enough that that's not going to be an issue for people with gigantic hands like me. But I, I really need that. Uh, because uh, I just can't, you know, my two Ed Browns, both of them, and my Nighthawk, I can lay my thumb up there, and I don't, I don't get that, and some of my other 1911s, but uh, I wish I could on these, I tell you, I like this, I, I want one, I, I, one of my uh, firearms on my to-do on my to -do list, on my, uh, I don't know, bucket list or whatever, is, because I've never really had one, is for when I'm in the mood to carry a 1911, and I've been known to do it, it would be a lightweight commander, just like this, in a commander size, you know, really. Uh, and one thing I like about this one, and the commander's the same way, it's got a ramped barrel in there. Yeah, ramped barrel. So it's dirty, it's hard to tell, but you're not relying on, you know, the rounds banging against an aluminum ramp, okay? Because I've had trouble with that many, many years ago, dinning up an aluminum frame. So you got a ramped barrel, which it's the rounds hitting steel and uh, all that. So anyway, that would be nice. You know. But smooth, oh man, it's put together well. Let's take a couple. Now these are the mags that came with it. it comes with two mags, sells for about $1,300, $1,400, okay? Didn't say that yet, did I? Okay. Wow, tight. Okay, oh, I better put my ears in now. I just about didn't. <laughs> It's a little different. All right. Yeah, it's not as quiet. What's wrong with it? Now let's go hit the gong. See if it still shoots straight. Without that attachment. Still shoots. Yeah. Nice pistol. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, this is a pistol I can, I can recommend. I like it. Yeah, if you're looking for something and, and you, you've got that kind of money to spend and you want to get something beyond, I guess what you could say, a, a lot of really pretty good pistols, whether it's a Kimber or a Colt, uh, name them. There's a bunch of a good 1911s you, you can get for 800000 you know. But if you wanted to, <clears throat> if you wanted to get one, without the MIM parts, if that bothers you at all. And you know, more hand fitting, that kind of thing. Just a nice, smooth, smooth firearm. Getting up there into that territory of those custom guns, uh, you know, 
is something to consider. Just, uh, you know, research them. Don't take my word for it. I don't know nothing. Right, really? But it, 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 it's smooth. You know, it feels good. That, that front checkering is really nice. Uh, that's the thing I like about it. Just locks into your hand. Boom. Yeah, man. Uh, I'd have one on order if it weren't for the safety. I really would. It, it, it feels, feels, feels very good. So it's the vigil. Was there anything I forgot to tell you? I guess not. Uh, so anyway, we appreciate everybody that's helped us with this. Got us the gun, and suppressor, and uh, ammo, and <clears throat> uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun to shoot. 45 is a lot of fun to shoot. I always tell you, you don't have to carry it. I rarely carry them, occasionally. Uh, they're just really, really fun guns to fire. The big old 45 slug does not kick that much at all. You might think it does because it's such a big bullet, but it really doesn't. Uh, a lot of fun to shoot, and every firearm we purchase doesn't have to be something we're going to rely on, you know, for self-defense or, or even carry, you know, on our person. So uh, you would enjoy shooting one. I I'll have to uh, to say that because they're fun to shoot. So the Vigil by Dan Wesson, not a bad little pistol, no doubt about it. Life is good. Uh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastol, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K four five on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.